Hi, my name is Jenny Shampoo, and I'm the director of the Book of Mormon Art Catalog. I'm here today with Kylie Nielsen Turley. Welcome, Kylie. Thank you. Kylie is uh, an instructor of English and religious education at Brigham Young University. She's the author of many articles and personal essays, as well as the book Alma 1 through 29, A Brief Theological Introduction, which was published by the Maxwell Institute. And I highly recommend it. It definitely helped me think about these scriptures in a way I never had before. We're looking today at Alma 13 to 16. Um, the artwork is a bronze sculpture by Joseph Butcher. It's called The Spirit Constraineth Me. And this is from 2018. Uh, Kylie, can you first tell us what is being depicted here? Who are the figures? What's the scene happening? Well, we have Alma, okay. Okay. who's resides as chief judge and, and went on missions to preach the gospel. And he talked and taught in Zarahemla and a couple other places first. And then he comes to Ammonihah. And he meets up with Amulek. Well, first he gets cast out. Mm. And then he comes back. An angel sends him back. And right. I think this is important to, to think about that he is directly sent on an, by an angel mm -hmm. to this place. And they start preaching. And then this is the aftermath of that preaching. So we're here in Ammonihah. Um, and even the preaching, we start in chapter 13. Mm -hmm. This is one of the most difficult chapters mm -hmm. in the Book of Mormon. Really tough, deep doctrine going on here. Okay. Here we are in Ammonihah, and Alma and Amulek, and they're speaking, and a few people begin to repent okay. and read the scriptures. But it says in verse 2 that the more part of them were desirous that they might destroy. Oh. Alma and Amulek. Hmm. Um, and they bind them with cords. Mm -hmm. And Zeezrom, who's been opposed to them, realizes what he's done and starts to repent. Mm -hmm. And says, I'm guilty. Leave these guys alone. But they throw, the, the people get together throw Zeezrom out of the city, so the male converts it appears out of the city as well, oh. cast them out, and then they bring together the wives and children of the converts that they just threw out of the city, and the, anyone who's believed, anyone who's believed or it says even if they were just taught to believe in the word of God, and they build a fire. And they throw them in the fire, and they burn the scriptures as well. And then they bring Alma and Amulek to this fire and make them watch. And this scene, to me, is we have Amulek and Alma at that fire. And Amulek says in verse 10, saw the pains of the women and children who were consuming in the fire he also was pained, and he said unto Alma, how can we witness this awful scene? Mm -hmm. Let's stop it. Right. He doesn't seem to have any problem with the faith. He seems very sure that they can stop it. Yeah. And Alma says, the spirit constraineth me that I must not stretch forth my hand. And the, I think the pain of Amulek mm. Is, is likely that he's seen his wife, his own wife, and children. Oh. We never hear about them again. Um, so now I notice this is Alma, the son of Alma, who sometimes yes. we call Alma the Younger. But it's the son of the older Alma. Um, he is an old man here. He's got a beard and a mustache. Um, uh, what, how, this is different than how I often see Alma, the son of Alma, in art. What, why is that important that he's shown older here? Well, it's important to me because if we back off the timing, mm -hmm. we realize when he was converted, mm -hmm. he's probably not a teenager. So we're, we're imposing mm -hmm. back in time something that doesn't necessarily fit there. So 
time-wise, I'd say Alma is easy in his 30s. Okay. When he was converted. Probably in his 40s, conceivably mm -hmm. in his 50s, which really changes the conversion story. Right. And makes this makes even this moment different. Mm -hmm. So he's not just, I mean, we often think of him as just this like rowdy teenager running around with the sons of Mosiah, stirring up trouble. But you're saying he was probably an adult man uh, who was going around trying to change the people's minds about their faith in God. Yeah. Just as they're trying to destroy Amulek, they're just trying, they're trying to destroy Alma as well. They're using his hallmark skill, his words. Mm -hmm against him. The chief judge says, after what you've seen, will you preach again unto this people that they shall be cast into a lake of fire and brimstone? Mm -hmm. See, Alma had just said that. Mm -hmm. Alma had preached that. Those very words. Those very words. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Except he said, your torment, if you don't repent, will be as if you're in the lake of fire and brimstone. And so, they make a lake of fire and go to a question that he's previously had about resurrection for the dead, use his words against him and throw people, his converts, into a fire. Make him watch, make him watch Amulek suffer mm -hmm which is a whole different kind of suffering than suffering yourself. Sure. Mm -hmm. Watching someone you love suffer. And I think you explained too that after this experience, that phrase, uh, like a fire and brimstone, is never used again. It's not. Yeah. So not, not by Alma or anyone else. Anyone. Yeah. And we've had it used multiple times mm -hmm. before. Also in your book, I in the very introduction, I just want to read a quick quote from you. <laughs> you said, can we read these stories slowly and pause mindfully, learn of loss, and allow ourselves to feel it? And I really love how you're really thinking about the text here and the timeline and who he had talked to before and what's happening now. And um, it helps me see the story in a deeper way. Um, and I like doing that with art too. I, I'm a big believer in careful and slow looking at the art. So if we could just look kind of at the formal elements of this piece mm -hmm. here. Um, it is a bronze, and I'm immediately struck by the sort of unfinished nature of the lower half of it. Yeah. To me, that creates a sense of precariousness. Um, it like, gives me a little anxiety looking at it, like it feels a little imbalanced or um, incomplete. Uh, and I think that contributes to the mood yeah. of the piece here. Um, and then this is from the back of the sculpture. So you, any, any other thoughts you have on just kind of the, the formal elements here? Yeah, I, I think the medium itself is important. Mm -hmm. um, if there, I think we've all had those nightmares where you're frozen mm -hmm. yeah. in a crisis moment. And that's, that to me is represented well by the choice of medium, mm -hmm. just just frozen mm -hmm. in horror. Um, even Amulek seems to has his hand up, yeah. backwards. And I, I was looking at that and thinking, you don't usually do that. Right. And then if we look at it from the back, yeah. what's striking to me is. It's like a, a cross. Oh. Both of them are in, but they're, they're tipped. Mm -hmm. It's this tilted, almost like two crosses mm. leaning over. That's right. Yeah, I see that. I like how their arms are intertwined. And the support. Support, we, yeah. You don't see that from the front. Mm -hmm. But Alma is literally holding him up. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, this is such a, um, a tragic moment. I feel like it's not one that we often spend a lot of time talking about, or even it's not even visualized very much in the art. Um, 
And, and that's, yeah. The structure of the story is set up so that we, we don't dwell on it that much. Okay. The structure of the story is set up so that the resolution of the prison walls falling down mm. and being rent in twain, which seems important, maybe even an allusion to the temple veil being rent in twain okay. after Christ died. Mm -hmm. um, is there, I mean, it's just, it's so overwhelmingly awful. Is there a message that we can take from this experience of what it means to be a disciple or yeah but it might not be a happy one i i think god can ask us to do really really hard things mm -hmm. um i don't know i think growing up i thought oh yeah i'll have trials mm -hmm. things will be hard but I think this story shows us that it's more than hard. It can be impossible without God with you. No one can make it through a scene like this on your own. Mm -hmm. I can't even imagine. So the path of discipleship isn't an easy one. No. It can come close to destroying you. <laughs> but God is there with you through that. Yeah. And what is, what, I guess, what does that tell us about God then, who, who allows this, as, as Alma explains to Amulek, that the Spirit constrained him, this is going to happen? Is that, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's a hard question. Mm -hmm. And... In some ways, I think we have to be really, really careful with mm -hmm. questions like that. Mm -hmm. These are, so many answers have been attempted over time. Like, well, God lets hard things happen. Um, but if we have to be careful to say that God doesn't make hard things happen. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I, well, mm -hmm. I guess he can. I don't well, know. Okay, yeah. But not this. Right, right. Yeah. No, he, he does not want this to happen to them. He did not make this happen to them. There's a word in the scriptures that I love, turn. God can turn things hmm. for good. He can, I don't think God wastes pain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's still hard. He lets, I think he values agency right. to an amazing degree mm -hmm. that we do not comprehend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and that often means that our choices affect other people, right? When, when Drastically. Yeah. yeah. Drastically. Um, I liked in your book, too, you said God saves those who burned in the fire, right? They do perish in the fire, but yeah. God is with them and God saves them. Um, and he can save those who burned them. That was an interesting sentence yeah. there. Yeah, he can. Um, if they choose, mm -hmm. if they choose to be saved, these people seem intent on destroying mm -hmm. Amulek and Alma, but in the process they might be destroying themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the thing to remember is that Alma himself walked right up to that edge. Hmm. The angel, when the, the angel came to Alma and called him to repentance, he says, no more. You can be destroyed. Same word. You can be destroyed if you want, Alma but you quit destroying my church. Yeah, right, yeah. Um, thank you, Kylie, for joining us. I, I appreciate your thoughtfulness um, in helping us think more deeply about this really difficult passage. It's a hard one to read when you really start paying attention, but um, I think has some important messages about 
the nature of discipleship, the nature of God, and um, and the importance of, of mourning with those who mourn, as, as we see depicted here, yeah. too. Well, Kylie, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you.